Alex here with a video. We'll do a legal nuts and bolts video on uh, litigation privilege. And I'm going to just mention right at the beginning of the video that this is highly relevant to child custody stuff, family court stuff. Highly, highly relevant. Because I can't tell you how many messages I get from people that say, my ex went to court and said all of these things about me that were not true and I want to sue her for defamation. The, the system does not like people suing each other over things that are said in a lawsuit because they're already in a lawsuit. They're already at each other's throats suing each other or, you know, one person suing the other. So you got a plaintiff and a, pen, and a defendant. And I mean, I also think that a lot of this comes from the fact that most ordinary people know that whatever is said in a lawsuit really is going to be decided at the end of the lawsuit by the judge when they make a judgment. Most people know these guys are in court. There is a likelihood that one or both of them are lying. Most people understand that, you know, whatever is said is not just automatically believed. Most people instinctively will treat anything said in a lawsuit with skepticism because they know that the person who is saying that is trying to win their lawsuit. They get that. That's an expectation. Um, I don't want to go into all the particulars and the details and the technicalities because that's what statutes, rules, and case laws for. And then there's probably a bunch of differences from state to state on how it works. But I did want to just mention that this is a thing. This does exist. This is a shield that confers immunity to people from being sued for defamation, uh, which will include uh, slander and libel. Um, so, yes, people can lie about you in one of these lawsuits. And yes, most likely there's nothing you can do about it. Before I end, it's not going to be a long video. Um, I just wanted to really let people know this was a thing so that they can look it up, so that they can understand it. And, and hopefully it gives them some kind of peace, whether they're the ones on the defense or whether they're the ones that are trying to find a way around it. Um, I, two more things that I want to mention before I end the video. Number one is I, as far as I know, it's not only the things that are said in court that are protected by the privilege. As far as I know, it is possible to make an out of court statement that is somehow connected with the lawsuit that also makes that particular statement immune. How, you know, what's the, the extent of that? Where's the line in the sand? That I don't know. You know, somebody's going to have to do some research, you know, on that, you know, like I said, statutes, rules, and case law to find out where that boundary is. But I did want to let people know, at least as far as I am aware, um, that, that statements in connection to the lawsuit that weren't actually mentioned at a hearing or in the paperwork might still actually be protected under the privilege. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that it, as far as I know, it's not just the litigants, that it, it protects the attorneys as well. Um, and that I guess that kind of makes sense to me because the attorneys are trying to do their job and represent their client. They were hired by their client. Um, yeah, a lot of people will say, well, they should fact check their own client. Okay, but they're mercenary. They were hired by the client to win. I talk about this in the video, win at all costs. You know, There are certain lies when it comes to the facts of the case. They just kind of take their client's word for it other lies the court won't tolerate so i mean like maybe if the attorney lies about like oh, we need to continue the trial because i was in the hospital i mean that's obviously has nothing to do with their client that's just them lying you know about something completely you know internal to them that, that triggered a delay in the process because they continued the trial or whatever of course that's different but when it's something like hey my ex said she was going to stab our child you know, and that's just the client saying that the lawyer, you know, takes their word for it and files a motion. Okay, I guess, you know, that drives people nuts because it's not true and the attorney lied for them. But guys, that's something that the attorney is representing their client on and they're trying to take it to the court's attention and see what, you know, what comes of it. And you know, a lot of times these cases are word versus word and that's, that's something that's within the boundaries. So yeah, there is a difference between an attorney lying about them being in the hospital or you know, and an attorney lying because they just don't know because their client told them something that they didn't know was true and they're hired to represent him. That's what they're being paid to do. There are differences between those two things. And it's my understanding that the uh, litigation privilege will also protect 
uh, the attorney as well. And then the, the other thing, I, there's one more thing I wanted to mention, and that is that there may be things that are said in court or filed in a piece of paper that are not protected by the privilege because maybe they don't have anything to do with the case at all. Um, again, this is really the stuff that people need to look into and do their research on if that's what they want to do, if they're thinking about doing this. Um, my understanding is that there may be statements that are made in uh, pleadings or in a motion or even at a hearing that just have s nothing to do at all with any of the litigation in the case that perhaps might not be protected by the litigation privilege. So really, I think I got the point through with this video. It's a video I wish I would have done a long time ago because so many messages come in from people who uh, they go to court, they were lied about, and they immediately want to sue for defamation. And I get, I get it. I understand that instinct. But I just want to let people know that there is a concept that is most likely conferring immunity to both your opponent slash ex, if that's a custody case, and your opponent's attorney. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them down in the comments below, and I will see you guys next time.